Hi everyone, welcome to the Career Calling Summit. I am Jess Smith and today we're speaking with Bobby Umar. Hello everybody. How's it going? Good, good, excited. <laughs> Me too. So Bobby is an international speaker, coach, and one of the most prolific advocates of heart-based leadership in North America. He is an author of three books, including an international number one bestseller, and most recently he was named a top seven networking guru to follow. He founded the DYPB Discover Your Personal Brand Conference, the largest event in North America dedicated solely to personal branding, and more than 250,000 people from across the world have experienced Bobby's high-energy keynotes, interactive team-building activities, and engaging workshops. So super excited to have you here today, Bobby, um, and we are going to be talking about networking, which is a topic that I love. I think that it's something that's super important, um, you know, in your personal life and your professional life. So would love to kick things off by just hearing a little bit about your general, general philosophy on networking. Sure. I mean, networking is something that a lot of people get thrown off by the word, but ultimately it's cultiv cultivating relationships, it's building connections. It's really about trying to start those relationships. So that's really what networking is when you talk about it. So one part of it is, you know, what do we do to build the relationship in a way that's going to add mutual benefit to both of us. That's the first thing. The second the philosophy I have on networking is networking is about giving. It's not really about, and yes, there's gonna be an opportunity someday to take something or get something, but to me, it's about giving. Have a philosophy of how can I help you? How can I help you make a difference? How can I invest and support you in what you're doing? And when I network with people, that's the first thing I think about. So I, my, one of my philosophies about networking is about giving. And then ultimately, you know, networking is also a huge part of, uh, thought leadership like if you want to be seen as a thought leader and you want to build a strong personal brand around yourself a big part of thought leadership personal branding is having a strong network building tons of connections you know, broad basic connections and also having deep connections with people that you really resonate with and that's an important aspect for any thought leader that wants to be there so for me that's my main take on networking Okay. I love that. I love um, that, you know, you think of it as more of like, how can I help you? How can I give to you? Because I think that often, especially when you're kind of thinking it, thinking of networking through the lens of getting a job, it's kind of like, what can you give me? What can you give me? So I love um, the thought of just what can I share with you and how can I help you benefit as well? That's really cool. It's very similar to sales too. Like a lot of people, even people in sales, they say, don't sell, find out what they're going through, what they need and how you can help them. Yes. The same thing with building relationships too. Yeah, exactly. And so you also mentioned, um, you know, that even just the word networking kind of throws people off, brings up a little bit of fear sometimes for people. Yeah. Where does that come from? Why do people have like resistance to networking? Well, most people are fearful or have doubts about networking for a variety of reasons. The mindset's always the one thing, you know, like, uh, you know, who am I? Do I have any value? Uh, the, the mindset kind of slows them down in terms of thinking that they can actually benefit from it or they can do something about it. So the mindset is one thing that holds you back. The second thing is really is tactics with the lack of tactics. Where do I start? What do I say? Who do I approach? How do I follow up? I, you know, the, because you don't know what to do, that also affects your mindset in terms of actually even starting and it creates fear and doubt in actually doing so. And also we, we can't really envision the end result. Like what's the end result of actually really good networking? Well, a uh, really good networking situation could take a year. And yeah. then next thing you know, they hire you for something that, you know, you, you, and you've known them for an entire year without anything happening. So, you know, we don't think about that end result. That's a long term. It's a long. It's a long term game plan, right? So that's yeah. that's the other thing. And then the third reason why people struggle with networking is they don't have the right plan. They don't think about their target, their objectives. Like, what's my objective for this event? What's my objective for this conference? What do I want to accomplish? Who am I in terms of my brand? What do I try and do to build my leads, my business, my career? And so. So for me, the, the three big things is, you know, not having the right mindset, not having the right tactics and strategy, not having the right plan. And that's what stops people from networking effectively. Cool. And so let's start with that first one, um, the mindset. So how can people change their mindset? Like how does confidence play into that? Um, and how can they get in a good state of mind to make networking a positive experience for everyone? Well, uh, one of the best ways to build your mindset is to, is to go back to the philosophy of giving and helping. Uh, if your if if your objective is to I need to I need to get this I need to have this happen for me, then it's going to be it's going to put a lot of pressure on you. But if you go there with a the mindset of I want to go help people, I want to go help and meet some really interesting people and help them the best I can. Just have that helpful mindset. Uh, that's one one way to shift it. Have a curiosity mindset. I want to be curious to understand people's stories and brands and lives. 
that that's another really really good thing yeah uh, that that's one way to shift it the other way to actually to shift the um the mindset is actually preparation uh, so we talked about tactics and, and strategies right so if you prepare uh in terms of you know here are the five questions i want to ask people so a lot of introverts struggle i did a i did a training on how introverts network and one of the things i said was introverts have really good powers of preparation. So prepare 10 questions that you can ask that are, that are more than just simple, what do you do and where do you live? Mm-hmm. You know, very yes and type questions. If you, that preparation will actually make you feel more comfortable. It'll, it'll lessen the, the doubt and the anxiety of networking. So that preparation will help. The second thing is the targeting. If you know exactly who you want to target and what you're looking for and what type of person you want to network with, then there's more focus uh, at that network. And that focus allows you to have more confidence because now you meet somebody and you realize right away within a couple of minutes, they're not your target and they're not your focus and it's not really, a so then you, you have the tactic strategy that you prepare and learn on how to end it and move on to another person. And so for me, all those things are gonna help you build more confidence and build a better mindset to, to network. So one is the, you know, change your mind shift perception of what you're cultivating relationships for and how. And the second thing is thinking about the actual preparation, which is actually gonna lessen your fears. Yeah. And I think the having a plan piece of it is great just because, you know, it can in and of itself be overwhelming to walk into a room of people and be like, okay, who am I going to talk to? Where am I going to go? Where do I fit in here? Um, So to have that laid out in your mind of like, okay, here are some like questions top of mind. I can ask people. I can definitely see that bringing, um, you know, a sense of calm. And I love um, taking on a mindset of curiosity as well. I think that's, um, I tend to be a very curious person and I like to ask questions and get to know people. And I found that people like talking about themselves. They love sharing, they love sharing their experiences with others. So that totally works um, to your advantage. You know, when you do take on that genuine curiosity mindset of wanting to get to know this other person, people like definitely want to share with you. Absolutely. Totally agree. Okay, cool. Um, And so we touched on the confidence piece. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about that, especially for confidence for maybe like in a group setting for networking and then confidence for maybe going into a one-on-one networking setting. Well, I think most people are, uh, people are far more confident in the one-on-one than they are in the, the group, one-on-group uh, type yeah. thing. Uh, but you know, I don't, I don't expect everyone to be uh, good with the one-on-group thing. I mean, as an extrovert, I certainly can go on a one-on-group thing with like six people and just start talking and be part of the conversation. Yeah. Confidence again comes from mindset, but also and it comes from planning, but it also comes from how you engage. So, you know, um, for example, if I if I join a group or even as a one on one person, a part of my confidence will come from smiling. It'll come from uh, asking really thoughtful questions, showing that I'm really listening, and my body language. All these different things will demonstrate the confidence that I have. Uh, going back to again being curious and helpful. That's really what I'm thinking about, and so. Uh, you know, that, that people will see your, your confidence just in terms of how you stand and how you smile. Um, you know, I'm a very tall person, so I have that advantage. Other people are good at smiling. They have that advantage. Some people just dress really well. That actually has an advantage. These are all things that are going to give you an advantage when it comes to building that confidence, whether it's one-on-one or in groups. Yeah, I love that. Um, so then moving to kind of the strategy piece of it. Um, how, how do people identify who they should be networking with? Because I think that that's something that people feel a little lost on as well. They're like, where do I even start with this? Yeah. So, and, and the other thing is which networking events to go to, because you can go to a network event and they're not your target at all. And it's a complete waste of time or at least not as valuable as it could be. I don't think anything is a waste of time. I think that, uh, there's, there's sure. less opportunity though. Um, so, you know, a big part of it is personal branding, like knowing exactly like what is it, what exactly is your brand your brand stand for? What's your expertise? What are you trying to do? If you have a business, are you trying to get get ahead in your career? What exactly are you trying to do? Because based on that objective, then you should have a target. So for example, if I'm uh, I'm a, let's say I'm a shoemaker. That's a totally extreme example. I'm a shoemaker and I want to build my business in shoemaking. Well, then there's a conference for uh, you know for shoemaking. Okay, that's something I should go to. And I want to talk to uh, people who make shoes. I want to talk to people who distribute shoes. I want to talk to people who uh, are, are buying and selling shoes at, at retail. These are the people I want to talk to. And so based on that target, I now, I now know who to kind of go after. And you can even go on LinkedIn and search, you know, shoes and, and see who are shoes. Maybe I want to meet a couple of influencers who are big on fashion and want to talk about shoes. And so these are all different things you can do to come up with the, the key targets of people you want to meet. 
whether on LinkedIn or Instagram or wherever, or, or the live networking event. So the, having that target allows you to pinpoint the key people that are there. And again, the other thing I'll say is when you, when you target an event, you can't target everybody. It just takes forever. So pick the four or five key people. Anyone else beyond that is bonus, which is great. But just focus on the four or five people you really, really want to talk to. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think so part of my story, um, I made a career pivot in my past from the retail space to the recruiting space. And I had no recruiting experience. Um, I didn't really know a ton of people in this space, but I just, you know, from my connections on LinkedIn, I was able to kind of find people who knew people who were in the recruiting space. Um, and even just like, cold reach outs to them on LinkedIn where I was like, Hey, I'm really interested again, going back to the curiosity thing to learn a little bit more about you. And like, what's your day to day? Like, um, people responded so positively to that. Um, and I think that networking, this just goes back to like how key it is. Like I got my job through networking is how it kind of ended up. I had a friend who had a friend in a recruiting job at a large tech company in San Francisco. And so I think that just, um, you know, even like cultivating like your friendships and like asking like, who do you know? Sure. I, I would say, and I would say 80% of all my opportunities have come from networking. And that even includes, um, yeah, personal relationships, like mm -hmm. my friends, my wife, like I, I met her through networking. Like just, that's just how it happened. Yeah, I like to kind of go through life thinking you never know what doors someone could possibly open for you. So always make that connection. Yeah, and, and I take the same thing. And my, my big quote on my email is, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. So I love that. Build the door to networking. Don't just wait. Yeah, you have to be proactive about it. Yeah. Um, awesome. So what other, what other strategies can you give us for networking, maybe specifically to help find a job if you're looking for more information on that, or maybe there's um, a role that you're interested in applying to, how would you recommend that people go about networking to specifically land a job? Well, the first thing I'll say is, you know, uh, you know, do you want it, right? Do you have the hustle? Do you really want this job? So if you do, you should, there's a few things you can do that really impress me. Like for example, I was a, um, I was, uh, I sent a note out for, I'm looking for, I was looking for a couple of people to with business development and uh, event management experience. And so what impresses me is responsiveness. I love that, right? They send me their resume, then, then they, I send them an email, they respond really quickly. Uh, you know, and I understand people are busy and stuff, but if you respond, you know, the same day, I'm impressed. That hustle really impresses me. So um, one of the big things that uh, a, lot, a lot of young people don't, don't could do better is the responsiveness the responsiveness one is responding quickly one is responding responding thoughtfully uh one is respond responding in in depth in a way that's meaningful and adds value to the conversation what we're trying to do i think those things are really important um you know because they, they'll often just some, some some of the really bad ones will just say uh you know like so tell me a bit tell so what kind of job are you applying for uh so they'll send me a the resume i'll say okay great you didn't tell me what you're applying for what kind of job are you looking for and yeah. they're like um not sure. Okay. Well, that's not really helpful. Like, seriously, <laughs> take the time to add value to your response. That to me is really huge. Another another tip I'll give for career searchers is you know targeting the right people and reaching out to them and actually not being afraid to call them. Call the corporate office and say I'd like to speak to the manager of such and such uh, and and their name and just and have a conversation with them and see if that that, that works. And I know it's a very People think that's so aggressive. I mean, but you know, before the internet, that's what people did. <laughs> they they called you and you had a conversation. But but you know what's what's amazing about a phone call is that statistically, a five minute phone call is equivalent to three to seven emails over three weeks. So you think about that, right? The immediacy of what's happening in five minutes, and you can maybe potentially book a follow up or a, a meeting or whatever it might be. That's amazing. That right? is Instead of waiting for the, the, the emails to show up. I think that's really powerful. And the third thing I'll say when it comes to career thing, and this is something that I actually just, just told my students last night because I teach a, a course at university. I said, look, guys, every single one of you, even if you're only in university or college, you should be building thought leadership around your brand, which means you should create content around the things you care about and what you want to build expertise in. So if you are searching for a career in, let's say recruiting, okay, so that you're a recruiter, right? Um, Write some articles, or do a video, do a blog post on trends in recruiting or trends in tech and recruiting, HR trends, like whatever, because as soon as I look you up, because I will look you up, I, 
I Google everybody, yeah. but we all do this. Yep. <laughs> and I see on your profile, aside from your connections and your profile and the nice summary and whatever, I see that you've written three blog posts about, you know, trends in recruiting. And I look at it and I'm like, oh, this is really thoughtful. It's really, that, imp- that impresses a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, there's a 24-year-old guy who does, who does smartphone and, uh, and uh, he analyzes smartphones, right? Okay. And after, after done 100 videos, he's now the guy. People trust him because they want to know what his thoughts are on the new iPhone X and because yeah. he's done that. That's amazing. So you can do that too no matter what age you are. Yeah, that's cool. Creating your brand and that credibility is huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that you touched on, you know, calling people, yeah. especially being in the recruiting world. Um, that was something that was really uncomfortable for me at first. I'm very good at, you know, reaching out via email. I, yeah. I love writing. So all of that's like very comfortable to me, but to just like pick up the phone and be like, Hey, this is Jess. I was really hoping to talk to you about like A, B and C. And like, this is why I'm excited. Um, even from a candidate perspective, cause I was like cold calling candidates type of thing. Right, right. Um, was a little nerve wracking, but it was like the more that I did it, I was like, Oh, people are again, happy to connect. And like you said, they appreciate the hustle where they're like, wow, no one has like called me. Like, thank you for calling me type of thing. Yeah. And another, you know, another question that I get asked a lot from networking is, you know, how do I actually follow up? And that's one event. How do I, how do I follow up? So the, the, the best way to do this really is first off, do it quickly within a couple of business days. Don't like wait weeks and weeks, a couple of business days. Don't do it that night because that's creepy, but wait till the next business day. Okay. And then you follow up with number one, give them, give them context, right? I mentioned this event, such and such, such. Number two, offer some gratitude. You know, I really appreciated your thoughts on this or I was impressed by this. Number three, what's the, what's the ask? Go for the ask, right? So I'd like to sh- share this article with you. I'd like to uh, set up a five minute phone call to uh, talk about such and such. I'd like to refer you to this person. Create some sort of value add that gets them or, or even ask them about, a really thoughtful question that you know, you want want an answer to, and then keep it concise, and that's it. That's that's the four things you do to, to follow up, but make sure you do that because a lot of people don't do. It. Most people don't follow up. Like it's, it's actually quite amazing. I, I, so I, I would say, from my own anecdotal statistical experience, I'd say the follow up uh, numbers are like five percent, five percent, five percent or less. That's crazy. So I, I for example, I'll go to an event. I'll give out 20 business cards and I'll say, yeah, contact me if you, and, and I don't give my business cards like, like, you know, like, like paper. I, I give them to people I think is really, you know, might be a good connection of those 20 people, maybe two, two, like two one or two will contact me. It's crazy. Yeah. So be the one that sets, sets yourself apart. Yeah. Because then it, again, it goes back to like, you never know, like connecting with you could lead to some other crazy connection. Well, and two things, not following up renders networking useless. What's the point of getting the card or the ad on LinkedIn if you don't follow yeah. up? And number two, every person is a bridge to someone or something else. You have no idea that they may have an uncle who works for the company you want to work for. You have no idea. So uh, yeah, you want to work that. Yeah. And then I think I'm just thinking back to, um, you know, being at Salesforce is where I worked in San Francisco. Um, and it's a pretty popular company. A lot of people want to work there. And when people would reach out to me about working at Salesforce, you know, if they could make it personal and, um, be genuine and have like a little connection piece, like that meant so much to me. And it's funny because it's like, I don't even know you, but now I want to help you because yeah. you know, it's awesome. No. Um, and it's just, again, like that connection. And then the follow up is huge because it's like, if I'm going to help you out and do you a favor and I might not even know you you're not going to follow up with me it's kind of like well did you even care like yeah I, I have emails like oh Bobby I met you it was so great I really appreciate it and uh, here's my resume and uh, let me know if I can help you and I'll say sure okay here's what I can help with and then nothing we're crickets where are you so a week goes by that's ridiculous that is ridiculous. you're responsive some great tips um, so we are running out of time, but you have a free gift that you want to offer listeners to so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So one of my, I mean, you know, in terms of the work I've been doing, I've been talking about networking for 15 years uh, all around the world. And so I've created a program called Networking Mastery. It's, it's basically 12 modules of 16 hours of content, all my best stuff on everything to do with networking, live events, online, personal branding, networking, and that kind of stuff. But uh, what I'd like to offer everybody is actually access to my first module, which is called uh, why networking and how to build a winning mindset. So it takes you through the whole process of how to build a better mindset for networking. And I'd like to offer that to everybody. So module one. I'm very excited about that. 
Awesome. Love it. Um, and do you want to tell people where they can ba get back in touch with you about your website or where's the best way to find you online? Yeah. So my website is www.rayallen.com. R-A-E-A-L-L-A-N. That's my website, but I'm also available on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, with my hashtag, uh, Rayhan Bobby, R-A-E-H-A-N-B-O-B-B-Y. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time, Bobby. It's been wonderful chatting with you. Excellent tips, um, you know, that hopefully people can break down some of those walls around networking <laughs> and use them. Thanks, Jess. I hope people follow up. <laughs> Take care. And I will see the rest of you um, on our next episode.